Next we're going to use the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool is found right here, this icon that looks like an old stamp. The shortcut is the letter S. If I hold it down, you will notice that there is a clone stamp tool and a pattern stamp tool. We're going to concentrate on the top one, the clone stamp tool. And the way that the clone stamp tool works is very, very simple. What we're going to need is going to be the Alt or Option key to designate an area to stamp from and then we're going to go and stamp where we need to fix. So for example, if I zoom in and let's say I want to fix this area right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the stamp tool, then I'm going to define an area to stamp from by holding the Option key. Notice that our cursor will change and I'm going to click right here. And as soon as I start, notice that Photoshop creates a preview for us, right? Uh, we can see it better if I move my brush to the dark areas of her hair. As soon as I click and drag, I'm going to be cloning the area where you see the crosshair, which was defined again by our Option or Alt key. Now I'm going to start from this point right here and stamp. Again, define the area first by holding the Option or Alt key first and then begin to clone. So for example, for this area right here, I would click right here and as soon as I click, notice the distance between the cursor, the crosshair, and my stamp tool. Now, this area will be aligned no matter where we go. For example, if I start stamping right here, right, you will notice that my stamp tool is going to, again, look at the distance from that crosshair that's in her pupil to where I'm stamping and it's going to stamp in that direction to the right because I have a line selected. If I deselect a line, for example, if I click on her iris with the Option key and then stamp in her forehead or anywhere else in the body, in her face, notice that when I click, my source arrow, right, this little crosshair in her pupil will start from this point again. That is because I don't have a line selected. Again, if I click here, notice that it will stamp from the eye again. If I click right here, it will go back to the eye. That is because a line is not selected. If I select a line and I click on the iris and then I click right here, notice the difference vertically and horizontally from the area that I'm cloning from and the area that is being cloned. Now if I go right here, once I select a line, if I click on her left cheek, it's going to sample her lips because Photoshop is going to use a line to determine the distance that we created our source from. And if I go right here, it's going to take those measurements again and clone the hair. So be aware that alignment is very important. Another tool that we can use with our clone tool is what we call the fade. As soon as I create a stroke either with a paintbrush, an eraser, or in this case the clone stamp tool, like if I do her iris again, and I stamp or clone an eye right here, and I let go of my mouse, Photoshop will remember the last stroke and only the last stroke. We can only fade the last stroke that we did. So if I go to Fade Clone Stamp, I have the ability to fade my last stroke. Okay, if I go to zero, it's like if nothing ever happened. But if I go to Opacity, I can fade my stroke. We can use this technique to create washes of our cloning. So for example, 
if I want to continue the shadow area of her cheek right up here, I would hold the Option key, click my source, and then if I stamp right here, I can get rid of the scratch. However, you will notice that the darkness is too much for this area right here. There's too much of a contrast. So what I can do, I can go to Edit, Fade Clone Stamp, and I can do that in very small steps. Then I can do it again. Again, we can go to Edit, Fade Clone Stamp, and this is how we create small passes using the Fade tool. So again, the stamp tool along with your channels, it's a very powerful technique to replicate certain textures. And this is how the clone stamp tool works.